Good morning, fellow Rotarians. Your Excellency, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa, Al Khalifa, Minister of Finance and National Economy, Excellencies, Rotary International President, Personal Representative, K.R. Ravindran, past Rotary International President, Rotary Foundation Chair, and R.K. Sabu, past Rotary International President, PDGs, Conference Chair, Club Presidents, Conference Delegates, Fellow Rotarians, of Protocol Observed. It is my immense pleasure to welcome you all to the Medical Wellness Group launching session. This group is of special significance to us, and we were very proud to have created it this year. I would like to thank our audience for being with us to celebrate this very important occasion. Special thank is due to past President Josie Norfolk, president of HURAG, for assisting to get the Medical Wellness Group, MWG, linked to, uh, to it as a chapter with recognized board and bylaws. The hard work of assisting Governor Past President Rami Sarkis, the chair of the Medical Wellness Group, is specially appreciated. And thanks go to him for creating the group and bringing everyone for our district together for this unique Eurotarian experience. Not forgetting, adding our thanks to the board of directors of the District 2452 M, M Medical Wellness Group, who volunteered their time and effort for this special project and program. At last, but not the least, my thanks is extended to the Rotary International and Rotary Zone 27, ARRFC PDG Carl Diekman, Cadre Rotary International of District 5160 and Director of HURAG, and to the Rotary International Foundation Chair, K.R. Ravindran, for their support and presence with us and their encouraging speeches. I now officially declare the creation of District 2452 Medical Group for the nine countries of our District 2452. I hand over to AG Past President Rami Sarkis, the chairman of the project, who will take us through one hour program for this special event. But before that, I would like to give you a little bit detail on his CV. AG, AG Past President Rami Sarkis is a Rotarian for the last 17 years. He is the assistant governor for this year, past president of Rotary Club of Beirut Cedars, Hewarg member, chairman of the District 2452 Medical and Wengers Group, and he is a specialist in the specialist dental surgeon. Thank you. And AG Rami, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Governor. Thank you all for your presence with us today. Before I start, I would like to thank Governor Mazen Omran. Governor, without you, all this would have never happened. I would like also to thank you, Governor, for all what you did for our district during the past crazy year. It was a hell of a year. Thank you also for the support and for the big uh, help you gave us, especially in my home country, Lebanon, for his economic, political, and social crisis. I would like also to thank the, 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 the audience for giving the time to join us today for our first General Assembly at the 2452 Medical and Wellness Group. The main targets of this group is first to link professional in the medical, paramedical, and wellness specialties throughout the districts. 
When we made our research, we found out that we are around 200 Rotarians with a medical related specialty. So we joined our efforts together and we linked together each one from a country and we regrouped and we created bylaws and we created a mission, a mission and vision and we became the 2452 Medical and Wellness Group. This group, when we contacted Rotary International, we met with Josie Norfolk and Carl Dickman, who are, Josie is the president of HUREG, the Health, Education and Wellness Rotary Action Group, and Gar is a director and a cadre at HUREG. And we discussed our relationship and we proudly became the first chapter of HUREG. We submitted our bylaws to them and we just celebrating together our first partnership. So what are the benefits that, will, that we will get and what our district will get from this? The first benefit is to link, these, to link these professionals together, to enjoy together, to get to know each other together, and especially to promote Rotary mission and vision, and especially the motto of our Rotary, which is service above self. We will have the chance to transform our specialty into a fundraiser. And this will become a very big benefit to our country, to our clubs, and especially to our district. Any Rotarian from the district, any Rotary actor from the district with a medical related specialty will immediately become member with us. He just need to contact the director of his country to get in touch with him to give him a small feedback about his specialty and to jump on board. It's very, very, very rewarding to become a member. So congratulations for all those who joined us. You will receive your certificates very soon, your certificates of membership. And for those who did, did not join yet, please go ahead, contact us, it will be a big pleasure to, know, to get to know you, to, uh, to, to, to welcome you with us. And when you become member of 2452 MWG, Medical and Wellness Group, you become immediately a member with UREC. And benefits, and get the, all the benefits that you will get from this partnership. We will be sharing together scientific events. We will be sharing together uh, seminars, projects, we will be part of global grants. All this we will enjoy together each year in one country of the district. It will be a huge and great experience for us all and a big benefit for the district, for the clubs and for Rotary. So please go ahead, hurry up, and apply for membership. Last but not least, I would like to thank, especially thank the organizer committee, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Rinuka, who is a Rotarian with her team, who did a big job and a great job for us. It was a huge job, professional, that was a very successful one at the last minute. So thank you all again for joining us. It is a big pleasure now to welcome K.R. Ravindran, who is today's Rotary Foundation Chair for the year 2021, who is a trustee member for the year 27-21, who is a past president of Rotary International for the year 2015-2016. He's a member of Rotary Club of Colombo, West Province and Sri Lanka. KR is a third generation Rotarian, joining Rotary at age 21. As Rotary International president, he introduced the Rotary Global Rewards Program, 
and led a delegation of about 9,000 Rotarians to the Vatican for an audience with Pope Francis St. Peter's Square. Ravendran was the first president of the Sri Lanka Narcotics Association, which today is the leading agency fighting drug addiction in Sri Lanka. His country conferred on him the title of Jewel of Sri Lanka. Ravi, thank you for joining us today. It's a big pleasure and honor to welcome you. The floor is yours. Your Excellency, District Governor, Tanmina Rami, let me, allow, let me begin by thanking uh, Josie Norfolk and past President Raja Sabu, who I imagine are responsible for bringing me to your forum. To be frank, to be honest, I am really not overly familiar with the intricacies of how RAGS operates, although I know that they are often a group of highly enthusiastic, highly motivated, highly dedicated, but independent individuals to whom very often some of the bureaucracies that is understandably present or uh, related to global organizations like ours, it just does not fit in with them. And here, as I understand, we have a group, which I'm sure are exactly what I described, capable of offering Rotarians and Rotary clubs the technical expertise and support to help plan and implement projects. Your specialized talents can help bring in funding, can help find partners, can help build your own friendships, and can help in obtaining other resources for projects of Rotarians. The works that RAGS do, of course, is invaluable. We have come to recognize that. In 2020, RAGS supported 1,800 service projects, connected members across 150 countries, participated in humanitarian projects to the value of almost $350,000. So your timing to commence this chapter could not have been better. Our members, indeed, the people of the world are perhaps facing the most challenging times this generation has ever faced. And we are not over the hill yet. As of today, 175 million people have been afflicted with this virus and more than 3.7 million people have been killed since late January 2020. 2020. And of course, I'm giving you the global figures. To medical professionals like yourselves, I don't have to speak of COVID uh, because I think in reality, it's the medical professionals who have been our true heroes. But the overall situation does look grim. The World Bank estimates that up to 150 million people will be pushed into extreme poverty. 34 million people, according to the World Food Program, are in the brink of a famine. And that's a record 35% rise in a single year. Sadly, vastly different vaccination rates have sharpened the global divide. Only 2% of people in Africa and just over 6% in Asia have received at least one dose of vaccine. Now that compares with 22% in South America 40% in the European Union, and more than 50% in the United States. So on the one hand, we have life returning to a semblance of normalcy in some parts of the world. And in other, in other parts of the world, people who are struggling even to breathe for oxygen. And so I repeat again, your decision to form yourselves into a chapter could not have been more timely. Your services, are always in demand and your talents will always find use. And if you leverage these talents with the resources and the community support that Rotary Clubs bring to bear, 
you are going to make massive headway. And I'm leaving the part about the fellowship, the friendship that you build up yourself, which is a huge bonus. As chair of the foundation, I've got a couple more days left. I can tell you that we are looking for your help. Although we do not fund projects by rags, we believe rags can play a major role in helping clubs put together their project proposals, assist in the feasibilities and the subsequent surveillance if need be. The goal of the HUREG I observed is to promote good health and wellness through healthy lifestyle choices and disease prevention. You, more than me, know there is no experience in the world to compare to the knowledge that we have helped to save a life. To be able to save a life, I think, is the greatest privilege one can have. Once we have done that, once we realize that such a power does reside in us, we want to do it again and again and again and again. That is the power that Rotary gives to us and that our foundation gives to us. And the catalyst to mobilize that power can just be one or a group of individuals like yourselves. Individuals with the expertise to sometimes put us Rotarians on the correct track. You yourself are a Rotarian but you're able to convey these sentiments, convey these opinions, convey these feelings to people, ordinary Rotarians like myself. Let me illustrate with a personal story. In my country, Sri Lanka, we had a project called the Cancer Detection Center. It's a very simple building, nothing fancy, where women can go for early detection screening for breast and cervical cancer. We have a very good relationship with our health ministry. So they agreed to support us with the doctors and the nurses. On our part, we would make available the building, the furniture and the consumables. Our goal was not just screening patients who came to the clinic, but to get the patients who had positive results on to the next step they need and that, so that they have the best chances at life we understood that people were coming into hospital when the cancer was already too advanced. It was no good. We knew that if we could detect the cancer in the very early stages, we could save lives. We also undertook the, uh, the public awareness and education aspects. At that stage, we had no major equipment, but we were successful. In the first five years, we had already screened approximately 12,500 women, all free of charge. Nearly uh, 200 and, or nearly something like uh, 2,500 of them were identified as requiring further investigation. And as I said, a chance at life. We were happy. If it was about this time that I met someone called Ed Partridge, met him by chance. And he was a former head of the American Cancer Society, a Rotarian from one of the greatest Rotary clubs in the world, Birmingham Rotary, Birmingham, Alabama, USA. He got something like 800 members. Let's say he was a person just like you, an expert in his field, not overly involved with Rotary, but when he met me, he was willing and eager to share his knowledge and advice. Through him, I saw our project through different eyes. I saw that cervical cancer is unique in that it is the only cancer that can be completely prevented. I learned that HPV vaccination in women prevents the disease and HPV detection, human papillomavirus detection at screening, ident screening identifies those women who may harbor a precancer which can be treated and which can be prevented from becoming a cancer. When I shared this information with my club mates, there was palpable excitement. Nearly 2000 cases are diagnosed in Sri Lanka every year and nearly half of them, these women die. Imagine that there was a chance that almost all of those deaths could have been avoided. 
we were excited. So by vaccinating girls against the virus and screening women for signs of it, this was a cancer that could be wiped out completely. We realized that we could actually eliminate cervical cancer from our country. To achieve that, in theory, all we needed to do was vaccinate each 10 to 14 year old girl child. The, 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 the PB vaccine had already been confirmed to be potent and a proven success. So that problem was taken off. In addition to the vaccination, we needed to screen with HPV testing each 35 and 45 year old women. The HPV test was very viable and doable compared to the complexity of pap smear programs, which we're now doing, what which we were now doing, the personal nature of it, they often faced, we often faced resistance. But first, with the help of Ed Partridge, and then the Birmingham Rotarians, and finally the Rotary Foundation, we obtained a new generation mammography unit. We added an ultrasound machine also critical for accurately detecting uh, breast cancer at an early stage. As planned, we increased the effectiveness of the cervical cancer screening through HPV testing rather than the pap smear process. Our friends in the University of Alabama agreed to train five personnel from Sri Lanka in their comprehensive cancer center technical training because the, the Comprehensive Cancer Center in Alabama is one of the best in the US. So with a Rotary Foundation grant, we put in a second COBAS HPV testing unit and equipment for colposcopy. Rotary Foundation funds also help train midwives and the col colposcopists, I always have a problem with that word, and supported our public awareness drive we were making remarkable progress. We negotiated with a giant Indian truck manufacturer, Ashok Leyland, for two fully equipped cervical screening buses, which will enable us to go into interiors to find those women who would not come to our centers. What's more, Ashok Leyland actually agreed to provide the drivers and to take care of the complete maintenance of these two vehicles on a permanent basis. The government of Sri Lanka understood our excitement. They showed their commitment by agreeing to fund the full cost of vaccines. They negotiated and obtained HPV vaccine at Gavi prices with a further 10 year commitment to hold price stable. This was a huge win for us. In the very first round, you wouldn't believe, in the very first round of vaccinations, 80% of the population of 10 year olds in the country were covered in less than six months. I mean, this is a massive percentage by any standards. Our goal of Sri Lanka becoming cervical cancer free was beginning to become real. To us Rotarians, this was like polio plus all over again. We were using and leveraging Rotary influence, knowledge of individual Rotarians to put together a master project. We were saving lives. Of course, it could never have happened without the one person, Ed Padrich and his friends. They were not members of RAGS, but they could well have been because they were doing exactly what RAGS does. Foundation, of course, played an important role for it was a foundation that literally whispered to us, look, if there are lives to be saved, I will help you do so. But what I want to say to you this evening is that the good our foundation does is not that simple. It is not an arrow shot from a bow or a pebble dropped into a pond. It's a flame. It's held aloft to light the way of another. A flame that equally lights the way of the one who bears the candle. And what I want to say to you is that you are the ones who are going to bear that candle or bear that torch, which allows that flame to throw the light. The foundation has given life and health and hope to more people than we could ever count. The foundation has vanquished aspects of ignorance and greed and poverty and hunger and all these other evils which the world is besieged with. 
the foundation give, gives us the financial power and the potential and the promise. The foundation has become an impelling force for good in supporting our work. But without the genius and the dedication of Rotarians like yourselves, the foundation would be impotent and powerless. And when experts like you decide to throw your weight behind Rotary projects, it becomes an endearing gift to our clubs, to our community, and to our country for many years to come. So my friends, this is your time. It will not come again. So shirk no duty and overlook no opportunity. Thank you so much for what you are setting out to do with this new chapter of RAGS. And I wish you well. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you very much. I hope that in the future we can join forces in your, in your area and in our area <coughs> to be able to apply such uh, projects. It's really amazing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like now uh, to welcome the president of URAG, Josie Norfolk. Josie is chair of the Medical Education and Wellness Rotary Action Group called HURAG. She is a past president of Rotary Club Melkbos in District 9350. Josie, the floor is yours. Greetings from Cape Town, South Africa. Welcome to all the members of the newly formed chapter of HURAG. Congratulations to you all from all the board members of HURAG. I hope you will work together in future years to build awareness, promote education, and provide information to help achieve and maintain good health throughout the world. My thanks to DG Mazin and AG Rami Sarkis for all their hard work in establishing this group. Thank you, Josie. Josie was so excited about the idea and she was so wanting to be with us today or even to be live with us. But unfortunately, um, she had an eye uh, injury and she was, let's say, she couldn't join us. So she preferred to send us a, a sound recording. Again, Josie, thank you for all the support, for your presence, for, for everything you did. Again, without you and Carl, all this would have never happened. Now, let me welcome uh, PDG Carl Dickman from USA. Carl is a Rotarian. He's a URAG director. He's a cadre technical officer, district international service committee, past, past district governor for district 5160 and past district foundation chair. Carl, the floor is yours. Thank you for the opportunity to welcome the District 2452 Medical and Wellness Group to the Health, Education and Wellness Rotary Action Group, otherwise known as HURAG. There is no better place than a Rotary Conference to celebrate your successes. And I especially wanna thank District Governor Mazin and Assistant Governor Rami for their leadership and bring us all together. Practically speaking, it has been fun working with them these past several weeks. I'm Carl Diekman, and I am a director for HURAG, and I serve as HURAG's cadre technical officer. Today, it is my experience with HURAG that I want to share with you so you can have a better understanding of what we have to offer you. In 2012, a group of Rotarians, including myself, organized an oral health and nutrition project in Kenya. This project was known as Kenya Smiles. Its big objective was to work to provide training and development for dental professionals in Kenya to help them expand their services. We outfitted clinics, we provided portable uh, equipment to the Kenya Dental Association, but more importantly, 
We brought a vocational training team from Kenya to the United States so they could work with our dental professionals in our country. And similarly, we brought dental professionals from around the globe to Kenya to work with their dental professionals, all with an eye towards expanding their capabilities and their services. This project took place over about three years. And then once we were getting to the end of it, we wanted to find a way to carry on its work or make it sustainable. And what we ultimately decided on is that we would create a rotary action group. But as we went about that process, we came across the Health Fairs Rotary Action Group. And we worked an arrangement with them where we merged the two groups into one, and that was the creation of HURAG. And it was from that that we started to look at areas of emphasis. And our original two areas of emphasis were, of course, health fairs and oral health and nutrition. You know, interestingly enough, since that time, we have added more. We've added autism, tuberculosis, awareness and treatment, cerebral cancer prevention, which is the area I lead. And soon we will add Rotacare clinics as our newest area of emphasis. Now, in each area of emphasis, we lend our expertise to Rotarians as they go about the task of planning projects. We hope Rotarians connect with resources and we pub as Rotarians, we can get involved at whatever level we are willing to allow ourselves to become involved in. Now, another example of what we do is we provide training and development sessions. Normally we do this in conjunction with the Rotary International Convention, but as you know, for a couple of years due to a pandemic, that's been a bit of a problem. But that really brings me back to the point of why we're here. It brings us to the District 2452 Medical and Wellness Group and their relationship with HURAG. We are delighted that you have taken this opportunity to affiliate with HURAG, and we look forward not only to the day when we can visit in person, safely travel and visit in person, but we certainly look forward to the day that we can help you work on the things that are important to you. So on my behalf, and the behalf of all the Rotarians that are members of URAG, we welcome you and we thank you for sharing yourselves with us and helping us all work together to improve the lives of people in our various communities. Thank you so much and have a wonderful conference. Good day. Thank you, Carl. So as uh, we discussed earlier, this is our first general assembly and as I, uh, and I described uh, our group earlier, it's now time for you all to get to know who we are and who are the board of directors and listen to them for a short time. So I would like first to thank David Kvirkvelidzi from Georgia, Shuren Shirbakian from Armenia, Barat Boutani from the UAE, George Papaliontiu from Cyprus, Nadia Abdul Haq from Palestine, Harb Al Omari from Bahrain, Lina Kara from Jordan, and Raja Ikamel from Sudan. I'm very happy that each one of them will give you a small idea about his country and about his vision for the coming year. So let me first welcome David Kirkvelidze who is from Georgia. He's a Rotarian, president of Rotary Club Tbilisi International, assistant governor for 2019-2020, board director at the 2452 Medical and Wellness Group, and he's a pediatrician. David, the floor is yours. Good morning, dear fellow Rotarians. My name is David Kwirkwelidze. I am president of Rotary Club Tbilisi International from Georgia, and I am pediatrician. I am particularly like to thank District Governor Mazam Alumran for opportunity to address you with a short speech. Couple months ago, I received invitation to join 
District Medical and Wellness Action Group, and I have accepted the invitation with thanks. There are at least three very good reasons that prompted me to do this. They are, first is opportunity to share experience. Our club and I personally had the opportunity to successfully implement VTT Global Grant Program in Georgia. We conducted trainings for doctors and nurses of the maternity hospitals, and we would be happy to share our experience with medical professionals in the countries of our district. Secondly, opportunity to promoting healthy lifestyle. Our countries have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, endangering the lives and well-being of our families and communities. The past 18 months have re-emphasized the importance of health education and promoting healthy lifestyles and wellness in our communities. Thirdly, the emotional reason to be part of something new that will help save lives is the right things to do. My fellow Rotarian health professionals, join the medical and wellness action group. I am sure your professional goals and desires will align with those of the group. Once more, I express my sincere gratitude to district governor and district governor elect for wholehearted encouragement and support. Thank you. Thank you, David. I would like also to welcome Shoren Shirbakian from Armenia. Shoren is a Rotarian. He's a past secretary of Rotary Club of Yerevan. He's a UREG member. He's a board director of 2452 Medical and Wellness Group. He's a dental specialist, therapeutic stomatology, endodontics, and cosmetic dentistry. Shoren, the floor is yours. Good morning, dear governor, dear board members, dear doctors, dear participants of the first medical and wellness group conference. My name is Sunan Shirvakin, the past secretary of Rotary Club of Yerevan. I'm a dentist specialized in therapeutic stomatology, namely endodontics and cosmetic dentistry, the owner of the Shirvakin Dental Clinic for over 10 years. At this meeting, I'm representing the six Rotary Clubs of Armenia. The first Rotary Club in Armenia, my club is the Rotary Club of Yerevan, chartered in 1996. At this writing, there are 114 Rotarians in Armenia with uh, 17 doctors across all six clubs. During 25 years, Rotary movement in Armenia, the Rotary clubs implemented a number of medical healthcare projects and while doing so, partnered and collaborated with international clubs. Over the past year, in particular, Rotary clubs from the USA, Russia, Canada, Germany, Australia, Norway, Belgium and Slovakia have been involved in our medical programs. Basically, the programs were to upgrade the capacities of healthcare institutions in the Republic, help the country to combat COVID-19, provide medical support to the injured during the recent war combatants, etc. I feel honored and privileged to be part of the Medical and Wellness Group Board. I thank you, the District Governor Mazen Al Umran and Assistant Governor Dr. Rami Sarkis for initiating the group and convey my uh, sincere congratulations to all board members with the opening of the first conference. All the group members must contribute to wider opportunities and join efforts to attract funds and other resources for our future programs. I wish all the members of our new medical and wellness group endless energy and strength to work together in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Shoren. Let me welcome now Dr. Baharat Butanei from the UAE. Barat is a Rotarian, he's a Paul Harris Fellow, he's a president of Rotary Club Jumeirah for the year 2021. He's a assistant district governor elect for 21-22, director of vocational services, 
Director International Services. He's a board director of the Medical and Wellness Group, and he is an internal medicine specialist. Barat, the floor is yours. Good morning, fellow Rotarians. I'm Dr. Bharat Bhutani, president of the Rotary Club of Jumeirah and Dubai, and assistant district governor elect for the year 2021 22. I'm Paul Harris Fellow. I have also served as director of international services and director of vocational services in the past. I'm an internal medicine specialist practicing medicine in Dubai. It gives me immense pleasure an honor to be part of this committed group of distinguished professionals from medical fraternity. Two important areas of focus for Rotary fall under the purview of Health and Wellness Group. Disease prevention and treatment, maternal health and child health. Emphasizing the prevention of the disease, Rotary Club of Jumeirah was the only club probably globally, to have administered 1,100 doses of COVID vaccine absolutely free of cost to the needy. With a focus on healthcare from the current year onwards, Rotary International Day, February 23rd, is Blood Donation Day at Rotary Club of Jumeirah for all times to come. I would recommend that all the Rotary Clubs, at least in District 2452, follow suit for this most humanitarian act. The challenges of the current pandemic have brought a paradigm shift in the approach of healthcare providers. There's a greater emphasis on prevention of disease. Greater emphasis has been given to the wellness, to fitness, to hygiene and sanitation. With polio almost eradicated, we the care caregivers at Rotary need to shift our resources towards generation of awareness and educate the masses about healthy lifestyles. I look forward to work alongside my Rotary brethren to alleviate the sufferings of the humanity. Thank you for your kind attention. Have a great day. Thank you, Bharat. Thank you, Bharat. And now I would like to welcome George Papaleontiu from Cyprus. George is a Rotarian. He's a Cyprus country trainer. He's a past president for Rotary Club Famagusta. He's a board director at the Medical and Wellness Group. And he is a special dental surgeon in aesthetic laser dentistry and implants. Welcome, George. The floor is yours. Dear District Governor Mazen, dear President of URAC, Chairman Rami, fellow Rotarians, I am District Deputy Governor George Pavalirondiu and past President of Rotary Club of Augusta, Cyprus, and I'm a dental surgeon by profession, representing the Rotary Clubs of Cyprus in our District 2452 Medical and Wellness Action Group. When Mr. Governor Mazen and my dear friend, Dr. Rami Sakis, kindly asked me to join the first action group in our district, I found it terribly interesting and exciting after learning the scope and the goals of our action group. The scope and the goals of our medical and wellness action group, just to mention a few, is to promote good health and wellness through healthy lifestyle choices and disease prevention. Also, group members share their expertise by collaborating with clubs and districts on service projects. To be specific, the goals of the District 2452 Medical and Wellness Action Group that make it so attractive for more colleagues to join are enhance rotary impact and public image in District 2452, you unite like-minded Rotarians from the district that have common vocational specialties and interests through medical and scientific events and activities, thus creating long-lasting networking, fellowship, and friendship. Bring partners 
funds as well as technical and medical expertise to projects, activities, and grants for the clubs in the District 2452. Give members and participants opportunities to engage in service activities outside their own clubs and countries in the district area. Promote good health and wellness through healthy lifestyle choices and disease prevention. Cyprus Rotary has 20 clubs and 594 Rotarians. Out of the five, 594 Rotarians, we have 21 medical and dental and other paramedical professionals that joined our club group. May I say that I expect more like-minded Rotarians to join. Finally, it's a privilege and a pleasure to be a, mem a board member to this action group. And I wish our medical wellness action group every success in the coming years. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Now, please let me welcome Nadia Abdul Haq from Palestine. Nadia is a Rotarian since 2019. She, she is board director of the medical and wellness group. She is a speech language pathologist and audiologist, and she is specialized in early intervention of hearing loss and cochlear implants. Nadia, we're very happy that you joined us. The floor is yours. Good morning, my name is Nadia Abdel Haq, representing Palestine in this forum. Palestine uh, Rotary Clubs are four, and we have four medical and health professional uh, members in these clubs. I am currently a Rotarian since 2019. I just joined the medical and wellness group as a board member. In the last year alone, Rotary Club Ramallah provided local elderly homes with uh, emergency supplies in the case of uh, COVID-19 and uh, personal protective equipment, as well as uh, 10 ventilators to different hospitals focusing on East Jerusalem that has the least support from um, medical supplies and also a device with uh, helping um, testing for the virus, COVID virus in Caritas Hospital in Bethlehem. Currently, uh, Rotary Club Ramallah, in collaboration with Rotary Club Genoa from District 2032, are uh, submitting a global grant for prevention and care of hearing loss for children in Palestine. As well, we are working on putting together a project to support the heart surgery department at Maqasid Hospital in East Jerusalem, which is um, the only hospital for uh, heart surgeries for Palestinian uh, children. Our projects uh, keep on going and we are happy to join this medical and wellness group to support and help each other across the district. Thank you, Nadia. Now, please also welcome with me Dr. Harb al Omari from Bahrain. Harb is a Rotarian since 2003. He's a board director at our medical and wellness group representing Bahrain. He's a consultant, dermatology and andrology. He's a doctorate, actually today working at Skin Health Care at Dr. Harb. Harb, the floor is yours. Dear Rotarian, on behalf of District 2452, Governor Engineer uh, Mazan Al Umran, board members, medical wellness group, physicians, and allied medical services visiting Bahrain. Uh, I want to thank, uh, on behalf of all of you, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Bahrain, for his kind patronage of this event. I am Dr. Harb Al Umari from Bahrain. I'm consultant dermatology and uh, andrology and sexually transmitted disease. 
we have four clubs in uh, Bahrain, four clubs with a total number of 160 people. Uh, I am a member of Salmania Club. The club was established in 1971 by a number of Bahraini business elite. Uh, our mission is to uh, advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace through improvement of health, support education, and alleviation of poverty. The common denominator between all of us is the COVID-19. Since end of February 2020, we have an average of 1,000 plus cases in Bahrain. And I think all of you that have this, shared the same problem of COVID. So as I suggest to the, to the panel, to have a proposal for Rotary COVID-19 task force, to involve Rotary a district in tackling COVID-19, vaccine misinformation and hesitancy. Many people are hesitated to take the vaccine. What should members do to help stop the spread? Local grant to fund COVID-19 related a project, regional grant to fund COVID-19 related project. How can Rotary and Rotaract get involved in this task force? The link below is from International Rotary International, and you can go there. You find the same discussions on the same site. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Harb. Let me welcome now Lina Kara from Jordan. Lina is an assistant governor for the year 2021. She's the president of Rotary Club Amman Capital for the, for the year 2016-2017. She's, she's a Jordan PRPI chair for 2019-2020. She's a district Rotary Friendship Exchange chair for 2019-2020, chartering member of Rotary Club Amman Capital in 2014, and she's a board director of, of our medical and wellness group. Lina is a pharmacist. Lina, thank you for joining us. The floor is yours. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, fellow Rotarians. And good morning to everyone who's joining us today in our first meeting for the Health and Wellness Rotary Action Group. We meet today to introduce ourselves. My name is Lina Qara. I'm a pharmacist by education with a vast experience in diabetes and obesity through my work as a business unit manager in Novo Nordisk. I've also been a Rotarian for the past eight years where I served in different positions, mainly as a president and currently as an assistant governor in Jordan. Jordan has more than 250 Rotarians divided into 12 clubs, out of which we have 30 Rotarians of medical background, each serving in their clubs for different projects related to health, and wellness and awareness. One of the main projects in Jordan is Gift of Life Amman, where we help children with congenital heart diseases live a normal life after their surgeries. Other clubs have different projects related to patients with renal dialysis get a better quality of life through transplants. Other pro projects related to people with blindness also giving them a better quality of life. People uh, who need dental health where many dentist clinics have been opened through the country and where many dentists in our uh, part have donated their time and effort for patients of unprivileged circumstances. Through this medical and health awareness uh, Rotary Action Group, we looked forward to working together as a district and working together as a country for a better health to the patients in our district and in our countries. Thank you. Thank you, Lina. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear fellow Rotarians, we are reaching the end of our General Assembly and opening ceremony. Thank you all for, for joining us. Thank you, Board of Directors. I am sure that we will enjoy together a very fruitful Rotarian year. For those who did not yet join us, please do contact the director of your country Give him a small briefing of your specialty and jump on board. It's a great and beautiful experience. Again, thank you, Governor. Thank you, Hugh Rag. Thank you, Ravi. And thank you, Renu Kanambiar and Origa. Last but not least, on behalf of all the members of all the board, 
we wish incoming governor elect Ashot the best of luck in his next Rotarian year. Thank you very much.